on. Um, so um, this is the uh, <clears throat> seventh meeting of the Open Source Malaria Consortium. It's Thursday, March 27th. Um, and uh, this is now being recorded, so we're on the record. So as, as I was saying, the agenda, uh, the abbreviated and important agenda is on the right there, the bottom right. Uh, those are the main points. Um, there is a, uh, a very extensive agenda, which is posted on the web link there, which ends in 9470, which has a bunch of stuff that, um, that comes in from uh, the previous meeting. So everything is basically active, as well as some stuff that's been done in response to that. So that, that's kind of a collection of everything that's currently active. Um, but it's too it's too comprehensive for, for this meeting, which should last about an hour. So the, the agenda items and the discussion notes window are the things that we really need to be focusing on. Now, I'm slightly hampered because I can't access that page at the moment. I'll try and do so by, by my phone. Um, but if I'm a bit slow in dealing with some things that are on that very extensive agenda, then uh, apologies, I've got a slight uh, connection problem because uh, chemistry um, is, uh, is undergoing scheduled maintenance on its network. So I've had to find some... Uh, a little cubbyhole in the library, which is uh, online. Um, so uh, that's the only uh, slight issue. So I'll try and bring up the um, the, the, the detail agenda on my phone. Um, it's good to see that everyone is writing up a little summary of who they are, uh, in case um, people are unfamiliar with the, whoever winners on the left there. Uh, in the window is me, Matt Todd, and uh, Paul Willis from MMV in Geneva. Okay, so um, before we get going uh, on the agenda. Um, does anyone want to raise anything general or want to uh, ask how this meeting uh, works? Um, you can raise your hand if you want to speak. Uh, that can sometimes bring uh, audio problems uh, if, you don't, uh, if you're using a PC and you don't use headphones. Uh, so if you do want to speak, that's fine. I can enable that. Um, it's just that uh, usually if you're not speaking, you have to mute your microphone. Um, the, uh, the other way of communicating is via uh, the chat window, which is very straightforward. Uh, but, uh, I may not pick up on that, and other people who are speaking may not pick up on that. But uh, it's a good place to ask uh, questions if you want to. Okay, um, does anybody have any uh, general uh, things they want to ask or do uh, before we get stuck in? We can do that. Not we can... Um, um, so there is a uh, PowerPoint um, a collection of PowerPoint slides. An old version is posted on the lab notebook. Um, again, the, the detailed agenda to so the web link and the discussion notes window ending in 9470. Um, there is a, an old version of the PowerPoint slides, which I couldn't just update in the last few minutes because my, my connection is, is rather bad. Um, if someone during the meeting, uh, maybe Alice, if you've got a second, if you can upload the, the newer version of the PowerPoint slide. To the lab notebook, that would be great um, if that's possible. Um, but I will do a screen share anyway of that, so uh, it's not that. The uh, most of the the stuff that's on that screen share, uh, which will, I'll, I'll put up in a minute, is about the chemistry. So what I would suggest is we start with that first um, <clears throat> and talk about some of the more recent synthesis which has been going on. Um, and what I might do is just enable, um, I'll enable uh, Alice um, as a presenter so that Alice, you can now switch on your, uh, your audio if you want to. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and I'll, what I'll do is I'll start with, uh, I'll start with the screen share of the PowerPoint. Sorry about that. There was an audio announcement across the whole library. Just... Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is start to share um, this my screen, and I, I need to uh, switch away from this current view, which I'll do right now. Uh, that may interfere slightly with the chat window and make it smaller. Um, I'll share this so that we can. Um,
So um, hopefully, and uh, see this. Uh, So hopefully this, um, I might just I might just share my regular screen. This is going to be a lot easier if I just share. So um, hopefully, um, Alice, can you uh, enable your audio so that we can uh, hear what you're saying? Is that possible? I can't hear you yet. Um, are you able to say something? Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, can, are you seeing uh, the PowerPoint slides in my screen share? Yes, I am. I'm just um, okay. uploading them to the um, to the lab book too, and I'm going to share that link in just one second. So if people can't see okay. that clearly, they can download the slides. Just bear with me for one okay. moment, and then I'll talk through the chemistry if you like. Um, yeah. If you could. You could put, perhaps put up the page, Matt, and I'll just, I just need two seconds to upload this um, slide and then these sure. slides. In. Is this uh, viewable and big enough? For me, yes. Maybe ask some of the other people if they can see it well enough. I'll give them an option. Well, is that visible enough? No, it looks great to me. All right, fantastic. All right, so um, while Alice is just uploading that, um, before we get stuck into the chemistry of, of, uh, of some of the molecules in series four, um, there was one uh, remaining issue, uh, which came from the last meeting and from and from some subsequent discussions, which was about um, these molecules here shown. So um, there was an issue relating to MAB six seven zero six five two, so the molecule there with a uh, seventeen nanomolar potency with a CHF two group shown in the in the R position, um, and for a while. Um, uh, Alice was trying to make this compound, and one of the issues was that um, at, an, at a, I guess, at an early stage, we were needing to introduce um, the the CHF two group to this compound, and um, that's a that's a problem with with uh, with freon gas in Australia it means that we can't really uh, use that uh, introduce that group very easily, um, and it was proving to be a little bit difficult. The plan was to make this molecule as a racemate and perhaps separate the amount. Um, and so because of the problems that, that we were having in, in doing that, so that there were kind of low yielding steps and so on, um, we asked the question about whether or not we could uh, instead make uh, the closely related compound, uh, which was MMB669844 shown there, also potent but with a, a CH3 group. Um, and it looked from um, going back and looking at the data, so uh, Paul went back and looked at the data, um, that this compound was uh, had been made as a single enantiomer. Uh, so in the briefing document that was inherited by the OSM project uh, a while back, uh, it appeared as though that was that had been tested as a single enantiomer already. Um, and in fact, uh, that's true. It, it had been uh, the single enantiomer in the, in the drawing was correct. It turns out, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Paul. It turns out that that molecule had been made as a single enantiomer, but no enantiomeric test was reported. So uh, the synthesis involved the Sharpless uh, asymmetric reaction, but it wasn't proven that the molecule had any enantiomeric test. So I think the uh, the stereocenter shown is sort of aspirational, um, <clears throat> but it's uh, we don't know if it's it, what the what the excess was. So um, certainly it looks like you know, the synthesis of the of the OCH three compound is is something which we can look at if we're interested in doing that, um, just as a sort of repetition of the synthesis of an active molecule. And there's no great need uh, right now to make the uh, the six five two compound with a with a CHF two uh, 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 group right right at the moment. The, uh, the related thing that came up, of course, with, with this was that um, we were thinking about whether it might be uh, easy to make the CF3 compound, so the, the lowest line that there are uh, in CF3, uh, which might be something that we're interested in the future. It doesn't look as if that compound's been made, um, but that's something which we can look at in the future if, for example, the EO, methyl compound is, uh, is, for example, metabolized quickly or, or something of that. Um, 
the, so the 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 uh, the approach to to getting these things as single enantiomers is, is taking a backseat while we resolve some of the chemistry, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, towards this sort of alcohol series, the ether-linked series of compounds, which we'll talk about in a second, which Joe has been working on uh, with, with, with Alice. Um, and Alice will talk a little bit about uh, possible enantioselective approaches towards these compounds, uh, rather than um, the synthesis of racemate and separation of enantiomers. That just resolves an issue that was outstanding with, with this set of compounds. Okay, so the, um, uh, in the main thing I guess we want to talk about is, um, is to do with uh, the synthesis of, of some of the uh, uh, some of the compounds in in series four, and there are two strands still: um, synthesis of uh, amide-linked compounds. So, uh, for example, the, the compound shown here is compound six in the bottom right, um, and the ether-linked series, which was the series I was just uh, talking about. Um, and uh, Alice and Joe and uh, and Tom um, have been active in Sydney on on, on these compounds, and uh, and Patrick and Edgeby and Devon in, in in Scotland, I think, is also on some of these compounds. So um, I was hoping uh, if you wanted to say a few words, Alice, about some of this chemistry. Do you want to you say something about this and, and I, I can chip in if you want? Or, um, yeah, that's fine. Be useful to get to um, I might okay. present on behalf of all of us in Sydney just for today and maybe Tom or Joe will do this next time um, just to, right. to, be, to keep it as concise as possible. So um, if we're on this amide synthesis slide now, um, first of all, we were starting with this, uh, with this, uh, the acid one here. We bought a small amount of this um, compound um, from Natrix, and we've been using this in the synthesis. Um, and at the same time, Tom, Edivy, and Inga have all been working on the synthesis of this compound because it's a little bit pricey. So this is in the bottom box at the bottom, at the bottom of the screen. So this starts from a, a much cheaper starter material, 7, which is about £17 for 25 grams. Um, and Tom is on the final stage of this synthesis at the moment. Um, it's looking pretty promising um, and has ironed out some of the, the problems with the chemistry. Edivy had also managed to synthesize some and Inga too. So I think this is looking like it could be a robust approach to this compound. Um, Sabin's approach, which is a direct oxidation of um, a methyl group on, um, on, so if you imagine compound seven, but with a methyl group um, um, next to the nitrogen on the other side. Sabin had previous, has reported a, a direct oxidation to the acid, but the starting material for that is also quite pricey. But we have two routes to this compound now. Um, we developed um, a a reliable amide coupling reaction using the T3P coupling uh, reagent and we, we started by synthesizing some amides based on amines that we had um, in the department um, and we now have ordered a selection which are on up on the on the ELM and initially we tried to couple the chloride with um, compounds of type 4 that we made by condensation with um, a commercial aldehyde and um, reaction with hydrazine hydrate um, but under the conditions that I've tried so far I couldn't get this reaction to work first of all I tried with a, the um, an incorrect catalyst well with a catalyst that we had in, in stock um, and then I tried under the exact conditions from the paper and I couldn't get the reaction to form 5 to work so we started with another approach um, which was to directly transform the chloride to um, with the reaction with hydrazine hydrate, and then to do a subsequent condensation with um, an aldehyde of type 3, and then to give us the key intermediate 5. Um, we've managed to make a um, few of these compounds now, and to submit them to the key reaction, which is this oxycyclization using chloramine T, which was from an Angavanta paper that Stefan Debert kindly um, notified us about a, a while ago and this reaction seems to be working quite well now um, Tom's synthesized a compound and I've synthesized a compound we're just waiting for the HRMS back to confirm that we have the right material we ran into some problems in the synthesis um, probably the thing I should mention is I've, I've, I've put a little note on the slide is that if you leave the hydrazine hydrate reaction on for too long with the amide so from transforming two to six, 
you observe cleavage of the um, amide bond and that had caused us some problems. Um, something that we wanted to develop is in the top right hand corner of this slide here which was to try and um, do the hydrazine hydrate reaction on the acid and to then we could take through larger quantities of the acid um, through to the oxidative cyclization and then just do a simple coupling reaction with an amine at the end. Um, and the initial results for that, we can make compound 11, but it's not very scalable at the moment because it requires quite high pressure conditions. So that's where we're up to with the amide synthesis for now. Um, Matt, if you don't mind changing the slides. So these compounds at the top here are the ones that are in progress in the lab. So compounds 12 and 13, uh, TM91 and AEW122, we've not given them OSM numbers yet, have been synthesized. Um, we're just waiting for the HRMS data to really um, prove this, but we're, we're, we're almost certain we have those compounds. And we've got 14, 15 and 16 that are in the pipeline, so we should have those compounds very soon and we're waiting for some more amines uh, um, to come in. Um, but we also have some other amines that we can we can use. So we should have a fair few of those amides to go for testing um, in the next week or so, which has been quite a good development because we were having some problems with the oxidative cyclization and some of this chemistry. Um, so that's kind of a summary of the amides. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions, but maybe I'll maybe I'll plow on through the ether synthesis now and then we can see if anyone has any questions at the end. So Joe's been working yeah, on the ether synthesis um, that we developed from the CRO prep that um, MMV shared with us. So uh, steps 17 to 19 I shared in the previous meeting, so I won't go through those. They're just um, we don't isolate anything there, we just kind of um, push the material through. Joe has been working on this oxidation and thanks to some great perseverance from, from Joe, um, she's managed to improve this yield to about 43%, which might not look spectacular, but it's a significant improvement on, on the, the previous yield. So this is looking pretty promising. She's scaled this to, up to a gram today and we're hoping that that this might be the, the conditions or the way forward. Um, we're waiting for PIFA, which is the trifluoroacetic um, um, acid version of PIDA, and it's a little bit more reactive in these, in these reactions. So hopefully that might improve our yield or our reaction times, because at the moment this is quite a long reaction time, but that's something we can develop. Um, so yeah, I think maybe go on to the next slide now, Matt, if that's OK. So this top line, I'm struggling to see this now, um, this top line um, here is from the CRO synthesis with, there's a difference in this um, init initial addition of the cyanide to the aldehyde in that we replaced the, um, the other cyanide source with zinc chloride and this reaction now works um, much better. So we can get through to compound 24 quite nicely. And this was the compound that I was trying to add the um, difluoromethyl group to, and we put on hold for the moment. Um, and I wanted to then, my initial thoughts were to try and protect up this alcohol and couple it to the um, chloride so that we could remove the protecting group and put different groups on the alcohol. Initially, I tried putting on a THP protection, protecting group, which worked fine and then doing the reduction. The coupling reaction under the conditions from the CRO was pretty disastrous. Um, so uh, I'm gonna mention on the other slide what we're doing to improve that at the moment, but just at the bottom here is I'm just showing you that at the moment I'm now making the methyl ether uh, to directly couple, try and directly couple with the chloride to form um, a compound. I've just forgotten the, num the name of that compound. The, I've got a list somewhere. Give me one second.
here we go, um, it's MMV669844, which we, is known to be active and could still be interesting in terms of um, separating the enantiomers of this compound. So hopefully I'll have made the methyl ether version of the original compound um, in the next couple of days. If we pop onto the next slide, Matt, if that's okay. Um, Joe has been doing some development work on improving this ether synthesis and she's had some good results. So she found that if she coupled her hardened um, compound 20, the chloride, with um, um, this alcohol 28 using um, conditions with potassium hydroxide and crown ether and toluene, um, she could obtain compound 28 in um, complete conversion. So we're just waiting for a yield on that. So that's looking like a promising uh, route for the connection of our synthesized um, alcohol. Um, so that's probably the conditions that I'll be trying once I have that in hand. Um, Matt briefly mentioned on the slide um, that I've been looking at or wanting to look at an enantioselective route to the um, alcohol chain. Um, the reasons for this are, well, it's probably two, really twofold. One, that it would be nice to have an enantioselective synthesis once if we determine in if we determine that one enantiomer is more biologically active or more interesting than the other, and secondly, because we've we've just we've run out of um, TMS cyanide, and apparently we can't get any in the in July August, so I had to come up with a different route, and this is based on some chemistry that I did in my PhD. So if we make um, iodonium salts, which I've shown in this in the box. Um, I haven't numbered those compounds. I'm sorry. If you Matt, if you wouldn't mind just pointing out what I mean. Box on this slide. So you can make these iodonium salts in really good yield. I've just made this the other day, and then you can make um, N-acyl oxazolidinones um, from different um, acid chlorides, um, and then you make the um, the silyl enol ether. Can then react these with the um, iodonium salts in the presence of um, a chiral copper catalyst to get um, the alpha arylated products in um, pretty good yields and good e levels of EE. Um, and then if we take this um, arylated N-acyl oxazolidinone through the synthesis, we could remove the benzyl group. And this says free on gas at the moment, but we could put other um, functional groups on here, then cleavage of the um, oxazolidinone gives us a, 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 a handle for coupling to our. So that's a route that I was looking at for possible enantioselective synthesis. Um, and I think that kind of sums up the chemistry that we've been doing in, in Sydney since the last meeting. Very nice. Thank you, Alex. Um... This is the visualization which we can come to later. So what I might do is um, so um, uh, just while we're at a screen share, uh, uh, we can now sort of uh, open that discussion. So um, there's a lot of chemistry there. Um, obviously, the uh, the main the main thing really is that um, it looks like the amide route is um, is sorted, um, and it looks like uh, from from you know, his trial reaction that um, hopefully the final step of the ether will be done too. So that would give us robust routes for both sets, uh, which would be great, obviously, um, and uh, and would allow us to make a small library. Of those for some uh, initial testing, some new compounds. Um, uh, so, we, on, on the assumption that both of those routes really are solved, um, then we look to you know, make a small number of, of each, a diverse set of each, I don't know, six, ten compounds or something, um, in the next month, I suppose. So, we're hoping to set, you know, send compounds off that have been characterized by the end of uh, by the end of April. That would be the, I guess that would be the idea. Um, so some in, in both sets. That's the uh, that's the the general upshot. Um, Paul, did you want to um, 
come back on any of that chemistry. I, mean, I, I, I just have to say what a great job it is. Uh, you know, I know it's been tough for chemistry actually getting some compounds out. I think that's you know really well done. It's it's been tough and it's um, you know it's, it's been a long time coming. So to finally have some compounds to test is, is superb. So so well done. Uh, I think uh, in terms of the amides, I'd be interested particularly in, in how we're actually designing and selecting the amides that, that we're going to test. I think it would be useful if we do we have a little uh, database or a page where the the targets that have been selected are, are actually being displayed. Uh, and if not, perhaps that's something that a small group of us could work on over the next uh, week or so actually, you know, optimising the selection of those amides uh, using the data that's available. Yeah. Uh, in terms of sorry, carry on. No, no, no go ahead. Let's take that point first, man. There was um, so we yes, we have done some of that. Um, uh, so uh, Inga, when she was here, was a, uh, on her summer project, um, did some uh, analysis of, of what. Um, so, so I, I put up a uh, the, the list of amines that have been tested so far. So all the data that we have on the amine. and that's a large um, uh, picture on the on the wiki page for series four. Uh, so we, we looked at that and looked at what appeared to be giving good results um, or what appeared to be you know, amides that we should obviously test to see which components of the amide are important. Um, and we did a search of commercially available primary and secondary amines that we could couple. Uh, so very mac components of the molecule. Um, and as a result of that, came up with kind of a short list of molecules that we were going to make. And that, that informed the, the order we put in for amines um, that we were going to couple. So that, there's a, there's a selection of five or six that are, that are either here or, or, or on their way. Um, so we have done that to some extent. We, what we haven't done yet is sort of put those up as targets because the chemistry is, is just essentially sort of yielded to, to the pressure. Um, but that's, that's obviously the next thing, is to, is to then sort of say, okay, well, well now, the coupling with these aiming is these are the actual targets. No, that sounds great. And, and I think with the ethers, uh, I think it looks great that, that, that we've got a, uh, a kind of synthesis that, that, that's come along. Well done there, Alice. I wonder whether we can actually start some chiral HPLC work, whether it's worth having an appeal, because with some of the compounds that we've already got, uh, where we either think we, we've got ones that are racemic or we believe are in anti enriched, we could start the process of seeing if we could develop chiral methodology. Uh, and then, you know, would there be the potential then, if the chiral synthesis is complex, that, that we could find somebody who could just separate an antibus for us, uh, if that was actually a quicker way to go. So that might be worth looking at. Sure. Yeah, that's absolutely a possibility. Um, you know, if, if Alice is an anti selective approach work, that's going to be really fantastic. Um, if, uh, but absolutely, I mean, we're going to be making the same material, so we can always uh, restart that appeal. No problem. And uh, I think uh, just from I, I, they haven't got a lot of metabolism data. I think the um, the uh, they started putting the ether groups in because there was a belief that that, that position was the metabolically uh, vulnerable position. Uh, and I think they just went for OCF2, believing that was a good balance of metabolic stability and uh, lack of metabolic liability. But uh, there's not huge data to support that. So I think at this stage, as a priority, if we could get the methoxy and the CF3 out, if, if, if they're synthetically amenable, that would definitely be worth doing. Okay. All right. Well, those would be, yeah, I mean, those would be initially racemic, um, uh, I, guess, I guess, at this stage. And then uh, uh, we'll see how the, you know, the more sort of an anti like approaches go. But we can certainly get this, the, the racemic ones. I think that's going to be you know, something that Alice is going to be looking at pretty strongly. Sure. I'd be interested as well that um, you know the synthesis are looking tough. It's going to be tricky to get lots of intermediates through. Whether this is another opportunity, whether we should revisit, whether there's the opportunity to get a CRO to to volunteer to perhaps make an advanced intermediate that we could then use. Because uh, I think it's worth thinking about how, how can we actually facilitate and, and simplify the process of making compounds so we can we can get more compounds out and really get stuck into the SCR. So I, I guess that conversation is easier now that um, the chemistry is, is kind of better uh, validated. Um, 
you know, when we were we were struggling with some pretty low yields initially, but now we're 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 getting the cyclization to work thanks to all the efforts that the guys have put in. Um, and it means that I, I guess we can have a, a more informed conversation. One of the issues, though, about that is that um, the decision on uh, I guess the decision on well, so if you look at the, the, the structure of the triangle of the, the northeast aromatic ring, the substituent on there is installed, you know, obviously earlier. Um, because then that's installed, and then you do a cyclization, and then you put in the, the uh, another group. This is the this is the EPA series, for example. Um, and the decision of which A mean to use in the A mine series is done right at the start when you make this, this initial A mine. So I guess one of the issues is that if we wanted a larger scale version of something done, we'd have to sort of decide on one of those substituents pretty early on, and then and then just derivatize one part of the molecule. That was the way we were going to do it. Um, I mean, that's, that's fine, but it's, it's not as if there is one key intermediate, which is a very early stage thing. Uh, and then it's subsequently derivatized twice. You, know, you usually have to make a choice about one of the R groups quite early on. Um, but that's not necessarily, you know, it doesn't necessarily stop a CRO from inputting. No, and it might be we just have to be pragmatic at this early stage and pick what we think our best northeast group is, and then we'll, we'll have to go back and revise later. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, so the, the, a lot of the so a lot of the chemistry we just talked about um, for the synthesis of both of these things. So um, the the key uh, pyrazine carbon uh, and some of the stuff that was done um, on the on the synthesis of the A mine. Uh, so Patrick and his students were also um, looking at. Um, I don't know, Patrick, if you wanted to come in on that and, and talk about anything that your guys learned about the chemistry that we should be. Uh, we should be communicating on. I know we've talked a little bit about some of the the issue to do with this uh, the uh, these uh, potential geometric isomers of these um, hydrozones. And if you wanted to talk about that, because I, I, we can just enable your audio if you wanted to speak. Okay, I'll just enable your audio. Then that's the simplest thing. Um, if you are using a Mac, then just speak. If you're using a PC, it's great to have headphones. So I've enabled your audio. If you want to enable yours uh, on the top of the screen, you can describe something about some of the chemistry as well. Okay. You're a little bit quiet, but I can hear you. Uh, okay, I've moved the microphone a little closer. Yes, so I had uh, two students, one working on the oxidative cyclization and one working on the amides. So on the oxidative cyclization front, we've basically confirmed what you've found so far, which is that the yields are kind of hitting a, a a a dead like absolute limit below 50% and we're finding that that's actually coming from the mixture of e to z hydrozone isomers the e isomers reacting very quickly and cleanly in the z isomer hitting the reaction with a lot of heat having acid additives to try and get some kind of dynamic kinetic resolution going on none of that's working and normally that's not a massive problem but it just so happens that our pyrazine um, like left hand side of the hydrozone when it's being formed causes a bit larger than normal balance of, of E to Z. So we haven't looked at improving the selectivity of the hydrozone for itself, but we do know that once we have the Z isomer there, it doesn't react. It just acts as a bulks up the reaction and, and um, comes out in the. So th my suggestion that I posted on GitHub earlier was as per the Angavante paper, a route that involves a terminal hydrozone being cross-coupled to form that second aryl nitrogen bond is going to be is going to produce the same intermediate five, I think, from one of your slides, but in a much more selective way. So that would that would possibly be a better way to go forwards. I think the cross-coupling that Alice tried a little bit is quite promising, and once I've tidied up. The rest of the molecules from a previous series that I've been or I might look at that a bit. On the amide front with uh, Duvi, we basically found what you've been finding already that the amide is cleaved by hydrozone if you leave. But yes, just that the roots generating that intermediate acid ourselves from the pyrazine 2 carboxylic acid is quite doable. There were some little gotchas with the synthesis, but we've basically fed that back already. Right. Calculated yesterday that we can produce the the pyrazine chloral carboxylic acid for about 12 or 13 pounds a gram.
we did try one or two amide couplings on that acid just because we had it in hand at the end of the project and we basically found that hydrazone cleaved the, the amides. Right. Um, yeah, there, there is, uh, just further on, uh, you, you were asking about whether or not you could uh, edit um, your students' lab book posts. Um, you can't unless you borrow their login. Um, uh, if, you, and, you know, if you want to tidy up things and add data, you can't do that. Um, so it's, uh, the, be the easiest thing to do would be to ask them for their logins, and then you can, you can add data to your heart's content. Um, it would be extraordinarily useful to have some of that because there, and there, there's obviously some NMR data as PDFs and things, but it would be very useful to have that because, of course, some of these issues are exactly the ones that we're dealing with right now uh, over here. Yeah, no, I'm particularly keen to get everything synchronized because they they have written formal reports for this yeah. um, as per our own university's guidelines, and those reports have data in them which are not in the lab books. And I admit it's my failure okay. for not noticing that, but that's a pretty... Slightly maddening lack of of um, now, but now that they've submitted the reports and gone into exam revision mode, I'm trying to find them. Uh, this is the whole process of having project students has been an education for. But it's tremendous. The work they've done has been it's been tremendous to have that kind of uh, level of input, and I hope they've enjoyed themselves. Um, if the data can come forward, that, that's really, uh, yeah. That's really no. great. Is there any yeah, Murray's got a suggestion there about duplicating duplicating the ELN entries. So maybe, maybe Murray can offer some advice about about how to how to do some of this uh, lab notebook tweaking. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Um, great. Thank you very much, Patrick. Um, so that uh, so that's I think a lot of the uh, chemistry. I hopefully I haven't missed anything. Um, uh, of, the, of the of the main thing, so the the main discussion, uh, sorry, the main agenda item on the right there is about which compounds are currently being prepared. Um, I guess one of the key things in the next week or so. So maybe we can uh, make sure that by you know in a week's time uh, we have a list of the current targets based on both amides and uh, ether series, and that we aim to try and complete a set in each series by the end of uh, April uh, to make sure we have a little collection of both. Um, we can also have a discussion about um, possible input of the CRO for, for a larger scale synthesis of some key intermediates. Um, if there's no other comments on the chemistry and, and the synthesis, um, please say if there is, but if there's nothing else on the chemistry, uh, then we can um, uh, talk a little bit about any biological data that we've been getting. So I'd like to just skip through to Point three of the agenda, we talk about biology. Um, there has uh, not been any uh, biological evaluation of new compounds made in the project because we don't have any. Um, the, the the compounds that were made a while back from uh, by Lawrence University undergrads in series one uh, were sent um, a, a few weeks ago now to um, to a lab in, in the U.S. for biological evaluation. So that's currently being done. Um, I haven't heard back from that, but that, that those compounds are being tested after after a, a delay. Um, the other data that came through, uh, well, there, I guess there were three other things about um, uh, on on biology that that were uh, that were relevant to the last uh, month or two month or, or two months of, of work. One was um, a remaining item from the last meeting, where we just before the meeting we got some data back on uh, on metabolism of some of the some of the series four compounds, uh, which said that uh, the, the compounds were being metabolized, obviously, and were being oxidized, but we weren't sure about the, the mechanism of the oxidation. And there was some comment on the, on the previous meeting about uh, some further studies being done uh, at Monash. Um, and I guess I was hoping to ask uh, Paul or, or check to see if the, 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 that work was going ahead, mainly in the sense that um, we weren't sure if we were expected to organize shipping of new compounds uh, so it's a replacement sample of compounds, or whether we were to, we were meant to be making more compounds for that work, um, or whether that 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 met ID that extra met ID work is is underway. So do we at the moment, Paul? Do we just sit tight? 
Yeah, apologies, Matt. I'm not sure what uh, the actual situation is there. I'll, I'll clarify that. Uh, and uh, if it's not possible at the moment, I shall may be able to identify someone else in our network who could do that work for us. Okay. It was something I think that Sabin was interested in as well, so there's a possible way way through there. I, I, all I wanted to do was check with to see whether the ball was in our court on that, but um, if, we, if we're just sitting time, then we can just sit. Okay, there, there were two other things, Paul, um, which I was hoping that you might be able to speak to briefly. Um, so there was some, some biological stuff that, uh, that came through a short while ago, which I just uploaded to the lab before the meeting, and so I, I didn't manage to put in the, in the agenda in any detail. Um, which was related to um, uh, an issue I raised about an apparent similarity between the Series 4 compound and a Novartis compound. Um, and uh, in your response to that, which I put on the lab notebook and, and, and on, on GitHub, you mentioned that there had been some, um, some evaluation of, uh, of two of the Series 4 compounds against the uh, liver stage parasites. Um, and that there may be then some subsequent work being done uh, again, uh, did you did you want to say anything about the the data and, and what the data means in terms of uh, possible mechanisms of action? I, I, I I've just sprung this on you because I I didn't I didn't flag it before the meeting, but we just corresponded about it fairly, fairly recently. Sure. Is it worth? Can you screenshot the actual what you put on to the ELM? Would that be useful just to to show that so people get the context? You know what, I mean, I would well, be able to do that, but my browser is really playing up badly and I can't access the lab notebook. Um, there is, um, let me see if there's an easy way of doing this. Um, Alice can, oh, okay, yeah, Alice can send a link, uh, and if people wanted to view that in their own browser, they could see that. So, Alice, that is the, um, yeah, that's the entry in the lab notebook in the triadal of pyrazine lab notebook, which refers to the similarity uh, between our compound and the virus compound. It's also linked on the relevant issue on GitHub. Which is fine. Okay. Well, I, I guess I can summarize that, that several people have noticed a possible structural similarity between the Novartis series of uh, antimalarials that's been published recently and uh, this particular series. Uh, they're both 6 5 systems. Uh, what we know from what's published in that Novartis paper is that the mechanism of those compounds is. Uh, that they inhibit PI4 kinase, uh, and that they tested them against uh, one of their uh, mutant parasites that was resistant to PFATP4 compounds, and there was no cross resistance, so the compounds don't act, they believe, by PFATP4, they act by PI4 kinase. Uh, a, a characteristic of those compounds is that they're active against the liver stage of the parasite, so uh, that's either done in a Bergii or Uelii liver system, which is just the initial schizont uh, that forms in the liver after infection. But as, as people will probably know, for the Vivax form of uh, malaria, there's also this dormant hypnozoite, and uh, BPRC in the Netherlands have an assay where they have the, the cytomology, the monkey form of malaria forms these hypnozoites, and they have an assay. Which, which you can test the compounds against there. And again, in the paper Novartis report, the compounds has been active there. For our PI4 case, we've tested them against the liver stage, just the schizons, and, and they were not active. Uh, so the, we've never seen a compound that then was inactive against schizons and, and active against hypnozoite. Of course, it could happen. Uh, so we are progressing a few of these uh, open source malaria compounds to the BPRC hypnotite assay just to, to double check whether there's activity. But the data that we've got to date does not support a common mechanism for the two series. And I think this hypnotite data would just be, would be the final piece of confirmation. So useful to get, um, even though it's a presumed negative, but still useful to get. Uh, is that, so, so those, the, the um, the evaluation of the of the uh, maybe a couple of the OSM compounds that's going ahead. Yes, yeah, so I've requested a couple of the compounds to, to go ahead. It's it's rather a low throughput assay, so it can't screen large numbers in a routine fashion. But 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 we will request a couple. Uh, I think the ones that hopefully that went through the liver stage already uh, to go into that assay. So we should hopefully have the data in the next six weeks or so. That's great. That's fantastic. Um, 
just on that point, um, Chris, you, uh, I didn't see what you did just before you, uh, you came to the meeting and posted something. And you were talking about a 3D overlay of a couple of the compounds. It might be more efficient if you could talk about them. Do you, can you enable um, uh, audio, your microphone, and, and just describe what you mean by the 3D overlay of the two compounds? Are you uh, able to put your microphone on, Chris? Oh, how's that? Am I? That's it. Perfect. I can see some Perfect. sound signals. Um, yeah, I, we. I think a lot of us had picked up that paper, and um, I basically just did a, a 3D overlay, and there's a very different shape coming off the. There's a very different shape coming off that core ring. Um, so I'll I'll display those. In fact, I'm I'm blogging at the moment. Uh, it was a slightly confusing paper because they, they, in terms of the theories, I got the structures of uh, their lead appeared to be what they called um, uh, they called KAI one seven one five, which I got a structure for. But they've also got this um, these other two actives. KA1407 and KDU691. Um, so I've I've drawn all those out. I'll put them up on my uh, on my blog. But I think yeah, it it kind of ties in certainly certainly on a quick 3D shape, a predicted 3D shape. They look they look quite different series. Okay. <laughs> it's again one of these examples where you know two two dimensional. You just can't trust it. <laughs> Because the compounds look bizarrely similar in 2D, but if you've done the 3D, that's really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. All right, thank you very much, Chris. That's fantastic. Um, all right, so I was hoping we could just move on um, quickly to one last thing, uh, Paul, um, which was about the uh, the Herg results that came through just, uh, I guess, a few days ago. Um, would you be Would you be happy to, to speak to those? Oh, sure. So I'm not sure. Is that posted online yet, Matt? No, well, it was. If I didn't have this uh, library uh, internet connection snafu, it would have been. Uh, so apologies for that. But um, I was running around for half an hour trying to get online. No worries. So we tested two compounds from the series in a Herg assay, which for people who don't know, this is a cardiovascular uh, ion channel in the heart, which has been associated with severe side effects, uh, causing Tussard de point, uh in, and so it, it is a real risk and is often seen uh, in small molecules. So the compounds were coming up, I think they have PRC 50s of about five, five and a half for, for the two that we tested. Uh, we usually you'd want to be less than four and a half in that assay. So it's a warning flag, it's not a showstopper there. I can't remember the structures of the two we tested. It, it tends to be more of an issue with with uh, bases, which I don't think either of these are, but, but other compounds can show it. So we just need to try and test a few more analogues and uh, look at finding a strategy to actually uh, remove the Herg activity that's there. And I think, you know, I'm not sure if we've tested any amides yet, so, so that would be a good thing to do. So we run the assay periodically. Uh, so we can probably get small numbers of compounds through. Uh, it would be worth an appeal if anyone, there are binding assays, so this is actually a, a patch clamp where you actually look at iron currents in a cell, so it's a relatively low throughput, high technology assay. There are binding assays which are higher throughput where you just look at displacement of a, a, a labeled ligand from the Herg channel, which are higher throughput. Uh, there is some debate how well they correlate uh, with the actual situation, but they can be very useful. So it might be worth an appeal whether anyone can run uh, a binding assay on a larger set of compounds for us. Oh, I see. So in the future, you mean uh, if we make a, 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 a small library of compounds, it might be easier to, to have a quick look at the assay in a high throughput mode using a different assay? Exactly. Yes, either that or uh, 
you know, we could test the existing examples to, to, to try and give clues as to what was driving the SER in our series as a way around it. Uh, I see Sabine has just posted, has anyone done a Herc Pharmaca 4 overlay with these compounds? I'm not aware that that's been done, so, so if anyone can do that, that, that could be worth doing. And Murray's volunteered. <laughs> Great. Good, quick work, Murray, thanks. You may have the result by the end of the meeting, I guess. Okay, um, so as far as I'm aware, that's all the biology news. Uh, so far, so there's there's three important things there. Um, they'll all be inserted into uh, into the um, the lab notebook if not already, and they'll be incorporated into the wiki. So uh, we're a little bit behind on putting some of that data up. Uh, and that and that overlay analysis would be also fantastic. So we'll follow up on that after the meeting. Um, okay, so that's the biology. Um, there were. Um, a couple of minor points I wanted to talk about. One was uh, that we recently posted plans and timing for subsequent meetings this year. This is, at, this is at, at item number five on the agenda. Um, if people haven't seen that, then um, uh, try and find the, the, the relevant item on GitHub or, or, or ping one of us about the, the timing for the various meetings. They were all the meetings, all the times were in the email I sent out advertising this meeting. But that's just so that uh, the meeting can go into diaries for the rest of the year. Exact times were, may vary by an hour or so here and there, but, but that's just to get uh, things in, in, in place. Um, the, uh, those are the meetings. Uh, the, the issue of timing for publications is a, is a very good one, um, particularly for series, uh, the paper of series one, so the, the, the first paper that we're publishing. Um, the, uh, so Alice and I have been, have been working on this uh, on and off. Um, I, I put a big push on this in January, um, at the end of January, and in, in the course of writing the the, uh, the synthesis part of the paper, um, I realized that we needed a compound registration system for, for the whole project because there were lots of disparate attempts at making various molecules that weren't linked. So uh, in order to write the synthesis part of the paper, you really have to sort of make sure that you're, uh, you're collating all the relevant uh, entries in the lab notes together. So um, as a result of that, we've actually made a, a, a good effort at, uh, at introducing a way of, of naming all the compounds in the project. And, uh, and we have a lab book page which lists all the compounds in the project. Um, and, and, and which then lists all the, all the relevant chemistry and biology to do with each compound. Um, we've also written the tutorial to allow anyone to uh, assign OSM numbers to a compound and to create one of these pages for each compound. And that's been road tested by, by uh, several different people. So what we have now is a fairly good way of, of, uh, of creating a, a, a web page for each compound um, and, uh, uh, and, 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 and a set of rules for basically how to do that. Um, that's also uh, useful in terms of, of compound visualization. Uh, we had a, a, a Skype call with, uh, with George from Campbell about how we can uh, automatically scrape the SD file of all the compounds in the project and put those data on the new um, Campbell uh, open source drug discovery page, which if you haven't seen it is really good. So on, on the malaria page for Campbell, uh, there's a tab up at the top which says OSDV, which is what we used to be called in this project. Um, and there's a, there's a table there of all the compounds that we've made and, and submitted to Campbell uh, a year or so ago. Now, what we want to do then is to have an automatic scrape of the SD file, which would then put in a, a table at the bottom of that page of all the compounds that have been made. Um, and that would be automatic. Every day that would be updated. And that would allow all the compounds to be visualized in the project. The compounds themselves on that page wouldn't be put into the Campbell database until they do a, a periodic import. Every, every couple of months, they do a periodic full import of compounds with all of the assay data and, and so on. Um, but, uh, but George is willing to develop a system that allows us to visualize all the compounds. One of the nice things about that is that for each compound, there will be a, a one web link per compound. And the idea is that that one web link would, would then track back to our lab notebook list of experimental procedures. So there is actually value in having one page per compound uh, for that reason. Um, so in other words, you know, if someone wants to find out all the different times that, that compound has been made, uh, they can simply visit the, uh, the relevant lab notebook page, and there are all the links. And there's all the data, the biological data at the top. So it, it would work quite well. And that, that, that took a little bit of time, time to develop. But once now it's done, um, it's going to be easier to write the, uh, the paper. So now we have to go back to actually write the paper. Um, now grants are in Australia. So it's easier, it's easier for us to do that. So what I was hoping, I haven't spoken to Alex about this, so I, I better not commit us uh, to, to doing it. Um, I was hoping that we'd have a draft to send around pretty soon um, uh, you know, by uh, Easter is happening in April. I was hoping essentially after Easter we'd have a draft that we can send around. 
but I need to talk to Alice about about uh, uh, our current level of commitments, commitments to other things before I can, I can put a date on. Once we do have a date, we'll put it on uh, on GitHub and uh, you know, well. So that's the that's the main thing. Uh, the main thing is series the series one paper. There is of course another one that Paul you mentioned about before, which is the possibility of publishing a synthesis paper on the current series four, which collates you know the, the CRO data with our with our current um, work on synthesizing these compounds. That's certainly something we can we can now think about given the view for series and aim at series. Uh, look like they've been sorted. And that's a possible of, of sneaking out another paper which is based on synthesis rather than natural biology. Those are yes, the current plans um, for, for science papers uh, coming out of the compounds we've made. Um, I should mention one other thing while we're talking about that, which was that Carmen Tran came in and did some work on, on, on a previous series, Series 3 of the summer project, and made some, some really nice progress on making the remaining compounds in Series 3, the aminothine and pyrimidine uh, set. Um, I didn't finish the whole set, but made some really nice progress with those compounds. Um, we do have a former student who's interested in perhaps doing a little bit of chemistry to finish that off. And Patrick is currently making one of the remaining compounds that's needed as part of that series, one of the twisted compounds that Paul suggested. Um, and he's, he's currently looking at synthesizing that. So there is another paper there in the works, but we really need to wait until the final set of 10 or so compounds is complete uh, and evaluated before we can think about Finishing that, that that paper off publication. That's where we're up to um, on a bunch of papers. Uh, if anyone wants to come back on any of that, then then please do so. Not um, then. Uh, there is uh, some a few things we could talk about. Uh, I, I'm conscious we've gone for an hour, so I'll try and keep this brief. There are a few things we could talk about about the website, making the website more user friendly. Um, now we had a meeting about web design and about uh, altering the website and altering the wiki and everything um, about a month or so ago, uh, to which um, Cloud City Development who were the people who originally developed the website. Um, <clears throat> we are, um, and I talked with Paul and, and, and Colleen about about the uh, the website too um, in, a, in, a, in a separate meeting. Um, so there are, there are there are some things which are being done. Um, such as uh, links have been installed at the top of the wiki page for series four, which now link to all the, all the molecules that are currently being made, for example, which is a, a GitHub label. So a link brings up all of the examples of molecules being made. Um, there's a link which describes all of the current to-do list. The one thing that's lacking is, uh, is human curated content, which says what's currently going on in the series. <clears throat> and that's always been the issue of how can we get that to, to happen. So how can we get someone on a, on a weekly basis to write a few sentences that says, this is what's going on this week. Um, it's just an extra thing to do, it's quite, it's quite time, time demanding. Um, but that was one task. Another task was to look at the current landing page, the main project, that landing page, and, and, and come up with a list of five things that need to be changed. Um, <clears throat> the one that's top of my list um, was that rather than the current list of GitHub things, uh, which was shown, which can sometimes be quite difficult to understand, we can group uh, things in, in those windows on the main landing page. Uh, posts to do with chemistry, posts to do with biology. Uh, posts which have structures in rather than strings uh, and so on. So um, for those two things, so for wiki writing and for crit criticism of the landing page, uh, we'd, I'd spoken with, uh, with Colleen about, about, uh, about her doing some of this work. Uh, and I said that I would, I, would, I would ask her for some input on the landing page and I would forward a couple of things that could be done on the wiki as, as trials to see if that would work. So that's currently sitting with me. Uh, Colleen is perhaps available to do that. We, we had a conversation about this in the previous meeting. Uh, but it's on me to forward a couple of things that are needed um, for that. It is something that perhaps we could, we could start doing on, the, on both the wiki and the landing page. So that's something to do with the, the website that, that's kind of concrete. The other thing we wanted to do, which is separate, um, was to trial a newsletter, which would be distributed by more traditional means. So uh, something which was um, uh, uh, either was going to be an email, a sort of feature-rich email, or which was going to be a PDF uh, about stuff that's happened in the last month, let's say. Um, and Alex and I have been working this. We have a draft uh, that's currently bouncing between us, uh, a draft of a, of a newsletter uh, based on a couple of PowerPoint slides, which features you know, new things that are happening in the project. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to finish that by next Friday. And we're going to PDF that and send it around, <coughs> excuse me, by email. 
And it will feature some of the things we talk about in this meeting, but just you know, general news about the project. Um, it'll come on a template, which we'll post. <clears throat> and so I'll take charge of this one. And Alice said she was interested in doing the next one. But really, we're very, very keen to federate this app. So we're going to post the template. And what we'll do is we'll, once we've posted the first one, we will prearrange for someone else in the team to agree to do the next one, or the third one, I think it's like. So Mina, Mina, Mina's next, this is the first one. Alice is the second one. And we'll call for a volunteer to, to do the third one, to, to federate the copy. <clears throat> but that would be a, a, a PDF delivered traditionally via email. Um, and of course, it can be posted elsewhere. Um, there's a mailing list, for example, in the uh, in uh, WHO TDR. Uh, which I'm, I'm kind of in touch with by some of the TV. It can be distributed by that, that those means too. Um, and of course, you know, we can, we can uh, look into distributing by, by uh, MMD also. So, so it's meant to be an, a, a total alternative to the current way we're disseminating into other projects, which is quite sort of web 2.0. We're, we're trying to aim more at the sort of PDF and email so of saying what's been going on by recently. So those are things to do with the websites and about disseminating news. In a different way. I'll pause if anyone else wants to come back and answer. Everyone is happy. Always happy to start rather than talk. As I said, there is a detailed agenda for this meeting on the relevant web page, and there's lots of things there. Uh, which are in, if you're interested in any of the details of any of these points, it's all there, including you know, previous action items and what's been going on. Um, there, there was, a, uh, and I'm sorry I don't have this thing to hand, there was a, um, an item of any other business which we can move to if we reach that point in the agenda. Um, uh, in case anyone wanted to, uh, uh, to bring up anything else which wasn't on, on the current agenda, which I think we've probably uh, got to. We dealt with publicity um, to, to some extent in any other business. Um, if there's anything else with people that we haven't decided and, and, and talked about that people would like to talk about, um, please uh, say so now. We've been going about an hour, but please, uh, please do chime in if there's something that we've missed. Um, and people have other meetings to get to. Um, what I will do, so the, the action is on me. <laughs> I don't know why you hate hyphens so much, Chris, but <laughs> it's going to be difficult to replace them. Uh, we can have that conversation off, off, off this meeting a little bit. Um, what I might uh, do is, uh, so the action is on me to convert this meeting into a recording. I'll put it on YouTube. Uh, I'll also make sure that uh, I finish the agenda and convert uh, sorry, convert the agenda page into a, a new set of action items um, and make sure I ping people who have uh, agreed to do various things. That's on me for uh, this weekend or early next week to get that set up. Um, if someone wouldn't mind Alice or, or, or Kat to just capture the chat window because we've got to post that alongside the meeting. Um, and I think most of the discussion has happened then. So if someone could, uh, could capture that before we finish the meeting, that would be really good. Um, yes, absolutely. Good point, Alice. If, if people have just uh, turned up to the meeting for the first time and would like to learn more about how all of this works or would like to um, volunteer to do something that's been discussed, then please, uh, you can contact us either publicly, uh, ideally, or if you're unsure about how this works, then please do uh, email us if you want. One of the team want to something. See, there's something that needs to be done and you have some expertise. That would be really fantastic if you want to go in touch. All right, so is there anything else anyone would like to talk about now? It's just gone uh, 8 o'clock in the evening here in Sydney. So, uh, last is anything else? Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Matt. Okay, fantastic. Um, all right, well, thank you so much, everyone, for giving up your time and to, uh, for, for coming along. Uh, it's always a pleasure, and uh, we will see, uh, hopefully see you all again next time. So, uh, uh, so, okay, to everyone, have a, uh, have a safe evening or morning, wherever you are, and we will uh, see you next time. Thanks. Bye. All right. See you soon, everybody. Bye-bye.